Okay, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, so hello everyone. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for being my committee members and uh, thanks, uh, thank you for your time and help. So uh, the title is Machine Learning for Fault Access at Computing and Autonomous Driving. Uh, also, I'd like to thank, uh, thank the support from Toyota and NSF. Uh, this is the outline of today's presentation. Firstly, I will briefly introduce the machine learning basics and uh, multi-access edge computing. Then I will introduce three works. Uh, the first one is as resource prediction in vehicular networks. And the second one is uh, low latency high definition map updating mechanism. And the third one is mechanism design for MEC assisted federated learning. And finally, the conclusions will be given. Uh, so um, what is machine learning? Uh, machine learning actually is a branch of uh, artificial intelligence, which aims at using data to make machine automatically uh, make decisions. So uh, in this way, uh, the uh, labor works or human works can be reduced. And according to the definition of Wikipedia, uh, machine learning is the study of computer algorithms that improve automatically through experience and uh, by the use of data. And uh, uh, from the perspective of functionality, basically machine learning can be uh, categorized into uh, three classes, unsupervised learning, supervised learning, and reinforcement learning. So firstly, uh, let's, let's look at unsupervised learning. So for unsupervised learning, uh, the data are all unlabeled, and the purpose is to discover the structure in the data. And uh, one of the typical algorithms of unsupervised unsupervised learning is k-means. So uh, assume we have many uh, scattered data in the coordinates and the k-means um, will measure the distance between the uh, data points uh, and the center point. Uh, um, to, um, if, the, if, uh, if there is a, a, a center point which is the closest to the data sample and the data sample will be assigned to the corresponding class accordingly. So uh, after the clustering, we can see the data points are, divide, are divided into three classes. And also this uh, is an effective way to label the data. And the second branch is the supervised learning. So for supervised learning, unlike, uh, unlike unsupervised learning, it gives desired output. So the basic method is to feed the machine a bunch of data and the and the uh, each data sample includes uh, features and labels. So in a, a training process, it will use back propagation to adjust the parameters of the machine learning model, like the weights and the bias, so that by calculating a specific uh, specific data sample, uh, it can give uh, the desired output. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, supervised learning can be uh, categorized into two classes. The first one is the uh, classification problem. Uh, the classific um, uh, classification problem uh, is to import the data into the discrete classes. So for example, in this image, it aims at finding the bounding box of the object and uh, classify what the object it is, uh, such as a car or truck or traffic light or, or something like that. Uh, and for the regression problem, it aims at predicting a numeric uh, value. And the typical application is to predict the stock price. It will use the uh, history, uh, history uh, stock price and the two uh, fit, uh, fit the, uh, uh, make the machine learning model uh, to fit the uh, curves of the, uh, um, of the price of the stock and such that to uh, in for the future stock price. And the third one is reinforcement learning. So a reinforcement learning problem involves an agent interacting with the environment, uh, which provides a numeric uh, reward signals. And the machine aims at learning an, optim uh, an optimal policy to, to know uh, which action should be taken in current state so that a long-term reward can be maximized. And uh, currently, um, 
most uh, reinforcement learning related applications are in game field. And the typical one is like uh, is the AlphaGo, uh, which defeats the human players. So uh, what makes machine learning so powerful? Uh, from the previous slides, we can see no matter for unsupervised learning or supervised learning, both of them rely heavily on the data. Especially for supervised learning, it needs a lot of data to train the machine learning model. So in the so in the um, in the era of the information explosion, we have more and more available data sets, and thus uh, con contributes to the prosperity of the machine learning applications. So, for example, uh, we have uh, 150,000 Facebook posts every minute, and we have uh, like uh, 200,000 Zoom posts every 60 seconds. So, uh, both these huge amount of data uh, uh, benefits the um, Flourishment of the uh, machine learning applications. Uh, so we can see that uh, uh, the data uh, is mainly generate, generated by the end users like mobile devices, but can this data live at the edge? Uh, even though uh, more and more data processing is moving on device because we now have more uh, uh, back, uh, because the devices have better battery life. Uh, or the more powerful CPU or GPU. And this makes on-device uh, data processing possible. And for on-device processing, uh, it has several advantages, uh, such as reducing latency because it doesn't need to transmit uh, data outside. And uh, also the, the devices can work offline. And also it uh, can protect privacy to a certain extent because it doesn't it doesn't include the data transmission. So uh, hardware, so uh, for the hardware, it's also in a uh, faster development, uh, but for big data-based machine learning, uh, on-device training is still a challenge. So, uh, so in this case, we have to uh, look for help from other available computing resources. So in order to relieve the pressure of the data processing, and the one of the uh, solution is to use the cloud computing. So um, tradi traditionally, for cloud computing is in a centralized paradigm. Uh, all the uh, mobile devices need to upload their data to the centralized cloud or the data center in a um, uh, wired or wireless miners. And the data will be processed uh, all the tasks will be executed in the cloud when the when the ex, uh, uh, calculation is finished. The feedback will be uh, returned to the mobile devices. However, in this uh, central centralized paradigm, uh, there are several drawbacks. First of all, since all the data needs to be uh, transmitted to the centralized cloud, it will bring huge communication costs. And the secondly. Uh, since uh, the uh, remote cloud is usually located far from the end users, and uh, the long transmission distance will bring uh, high latency. Accordingly, uh, high latency will uh, result in uh, low quality of services as well. So in order to overcome these uh, disadvantages, uh, edge computing is emerged as a solution, um, uh, which is in a, a distributed paradigm. Uh, basically, edge computing involves three uh, layers, a cloud server, edge servers, and mobile devices. So compared with uh, cloud computing, uh, new stuff here is the uh, edge server. Uh, with, uh, edge servers will be uh, distributed, allocated at the edge of the networks. So for generated data, uh, it will be uh, transmitted to the edge server firstly for uh, processing. Uh, when the edge server is unable to process the data, like the capacity or the storage is already overflow, uh, uh, the, ta the corresponding tasks will be uploaded to the uh, cloud for further processing. But overall, in edge computing networks, the edge server is the main part to execute the tasks. And uh, uh, because uh, the edge server uh, is located more closer, uh, to the uh, end users, so the latency can be reduced uh, significantly. Next, 
uh, I will introduce my uh, first work, which use uh, machine learning approach to predict uh, edge computing resources in vehicular networks. So uh, autonomous vehicle uh, is an emerging application for future uh, transportation. And uh, the autonomy is heavily dependent on the data generated by uh, onboard sensors and the cameras. Uh, based on the forecast of Intel, one autonomous vehicle will generate 4 TB data per day. So uh, we can say uh, to process um, such amount, uh, such, such huge amount of generated data, the tasks will be very uh, memory consuming and uh, computation intensive. Besides, uh, there are some tasks for autonomous vehicles that are latency sensitive, such as uh, path planning or pedestrian uh, detection, because they are uh, safety or uh, life related action, uh, applications. So if the uh, decisions can be, re uh, can be made in real time, it will be more safe for uh, both drivers and the pedestrians. Uh, as mentioned previously, uh, to, uh, to execute such com computation intensive and latency sensitive tasks, edge computing can be an effective way to reduce the latency and uh, um, bring more compute, uh, computing resources compared with uh, compu uh, computation by the vehicle itself. Uh, but from the commercial perspective, uh, the edge computing resources needs to be purchased if you want to use it. So the um, typical schemes to uh, use the edge computing resource can uh, are reservation and pay by use. And generally, the unit price uh, for reservation is much cheaper than the uh, unit price uh, of the pay by use. And here we take um, AWS as an example. According to the description, we can see a uh, reservation can save up to 75% compared with the uh, cost of pay by use scheme. So here is the uh, scenario. We consider an edge computing uh, platform uh, which will deploy edge nodes and providing edge computing services. And the edge computing resources can be purchased by reservation or real-time requests. And uh, the uh, automotive company will provide services to uh, automotive vehicles uh, to the and for the customers for intelligent applications such as uh, path planning, flying or real-time object detection or something like that. So the contract will be built between the um, edge computing company and the auto automotive company. So for automotive company, uh, if you want to use the edge computing resources, uh, how to minimize the uh, cost needs to be considered. And here is the problem description. So as previously mentioned, the unit price for reservation um, uh, is much cheaper than the uh, unit price of the uh, uh, real-time request. And so and, uh, here we define um, the, at each time slot, uh, a practical uh, needed amount for edge computing resource is N units. And then the total reserved amount is M units. So if uh, if the uh, so the corresponding uh, cost can be defined as the ST. So if the uh, reserved amount is less than the, uh, what you need, uh, the insufficient uh, the uh, insufficient amount will be purchased by real time requests, which is much uh, uh, which is more expensive than the uh, reservation way. Otherwise, the uh, the reserved um, uh, resources can cover the current use. But if you re reserve more than what you need, it's also kind of a uh, waste. So our purpose is to minimize the waste and the object function can be defined by mean square error, which means we would like to reserve exactly as what we need. Besides, un unlike the uh, general uh, regression problems for auto uh, auto autonomous vehicles, uh, diverse road types bring a different, uh, dif uh, different difficulty levels for the tasks. For example, here we show the roadmap of autonomous driving technology of Nissan. We can see as time goes by, uh, uh, road types become more and more complicated. 
by 2016, it only considers a single lane highway. And by 2018, it considers a, a multi-lane highway. And by 2020, it becomes more complicated like intersections. So the problem is that can we predict edge computing resource consumption accurately for all of, for all of these kind of uh, roadmaps? So to uh, solve the problem, we consider a meta learning approach. So uh, what is uh, meta learning? Uh, like if you already learn um, 100 tasks already, uh, can you figure out how to learn um, new tasks more efficiently? So just like the figure shows uh, uh, general uh, gradient descent process. After reaching a specific uh, situation, uh, for the next step, uh, which direction should you go? So traditionally, you just try to see if the uh, gradient um, is actually de uh, uh, descent, uh, descendant or not, or not. But here, if you have uh, enough experience, maybe you have seen this kind of uh, situation before and uh, your experience will guide you to the op um, uh, optimal direction instead of uh, several trials. So uh, this is the basic idea of the math learning, which is to utilize um, uh, experience to guide the current tasks. So if you have more uh, experienced tasks, it will become more beneficial. Uh, this, this is also uh, why math learning is, also, uh, is called um, learning to learn because the process is just like a uh, human beings uh, study to use your experience or what you have learned before to, uh, uh, to current uh, tasks or applications. So overall, since the objective function is to minimize the mean square error and uh, edge, com uh, edge computing resource consumption is actually a kind of uh, time series data. So here we, are, we adopt the recurrent neural networks family as algorithm space. Uh, so one of the typical practices of the recurrent neural network is that the current output is not only uh, de uh, decided by the current input, but uh, also the previous output. Uh, so this is, uh, 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 this is the main difference between the RNN and the traditional DNN, because in traditional DNN, uh, we only uh, we um, because for the uh, traditional uh, DNN, it uh, assumes each uh, piece of data is independent. So uh, uh, so here uh, for the time series data, the uh, the output, uh, the data or the data points are dependent actually. So uh, the first uh, so the first uh, machine learning model is the LSTM, which can be uh, uh, divided into uh, three uh, three gates: forget gate, uh, input gate, and out of the gate. So the forget gate will decide what to discard among the uh, among the history information, and the input gates will decide uh, what information will be kept uh, and uh, be transmitted to the next uh, uh, next time slot. And uh, the output will calculate the uh, final uh, final value. So this is the LSTM structure. Besides, we also use the um, bidirectional LSTM. So for LSTM, it only considers the uh, clockwise information. Um, but for bidirectional LSTM, it considers uh, um, both of the clockwise and the counterclockwise information. So the out output will be decided by uh, two, uh, two different information flows. And also we adopt two uh, deep models based on LSTM and the bidirectional uh, uh, LSTM. So, like, uh, so, uh, so this is like the development from um, shallow artificial neural network to the deep neural networks. We can also add more hidden layers to construct the deep, uh, deep models. In these two models, all the layers are fully connected with uh, are, full, are fully connected, which means the output of the uh, pre previous layer is the input of the current layer. So uh, by adding more uh, hidden layers, we uh, the deep models are constructed uh, based on the shadow models. 
Uh, based on this, we propose a two-stage machine learning framework. The first stage is to decide which machine learning model should be selected based on history data. And in this stage, the object function is shown like this. So here, the model site includes four um, uh, uh, RNN, uh, based, uh, RNN based models introduced uh, previously. And the feature set includes the road, road type, uh, data size, and number of vehicles. So the, for the uh, road type, we choose four different kinds of uh, road maps, like intersections, highway, roundabouts, and the um, and the mountain yeah, and the and the bridge. And then the data size we um, divide into three uh, categories, uh, like small, medium, and uh, big. And for each uh, for each class, we have a, a, a value a interval, and the actual size will be rand randomly generated uh, uh, in the interval. And also the number of vehicles, we also uh, categorize it uh, as small, medium, and the big, so as to mimic the uh, a peak or off-peak traffic flows uh, as practice. Uh, and so here, uh, the F is the selected model, and the R is the suggested model. Uh, so this stage is to utilize the history data to select the proper model for the current uh, edge computing and prediction. And the uh, second stage is to use the uh, selected model to perform prediction tasks. So here, the object function is uh, shown like this. So the phi is the model parameter, which is the weight and the phi needs to be adjusted. Uh, and the X is input data and the Y is the ground truth, which uh, is the desirable amount of edge computing resource, resource you need to observe. So in the second stage, it's, uh, it's just like the um, uh, general um, machine learning and training process to just to predict the edge computing resources. And here is the uh, data generation process. Uh, here we built up the 3D model of real Manhattan area uh, as the um, geography background. And we choose four typical different roadmaps for simulations. And uh, they uh, like uh, multi intersections, roundabout, uh, highway, and uh, the bridge. So here is the, uh, so this is the uh, video for the simulation. Uh, let's uh, look at it. So we can see there are many lines uh, here and which denotes the connection uh, between edge server and the vehicles. And then the moving dots are the uh, vehicles which will um, uh, 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 obey the basic uh, traffic rules. And the center point of the uh, lines are, is the location of the edge server. And we can also see there are uh, different colors uh, for the uh, connection lines. Um, and uh, the different colors means the different status of the tasks, like the task, uh, like, the, um, like the connection, the task is being processing and the task has been completed. So um, this is the uh, simulation environment of, the, um, of this work. And this is a roundabout uh, scenario. All the, all the uh, vehicles move uh, based on the basic traffic rules. So, uh, for the, uh, so for the evaluation metrics, uh, we, we adopt the three, uh, three metrics, which is uh, root mean square error, uh, absolute percentage, and the mean H, um, and the mean GEH. And uh, for all these three metrics, if the uh, um, evaluator values are smaller, which means the accuracy is higher. So obviously we can find that our proposed uh, metalinear approach can achieve the lowest values of the three metrics. Correspondingly, it brings less, uh, less waste compared with the other baseline methods. Now I will introduce the second work. Uh, low latency high definition map updating mechanism.
So, uh, so uh, what is a uh, high definition map? Beyond the current map, we use like a, a Google map. It contains more road con attributes like lane markings and the surrounding vehicles or pedestrian positions. Also, it has high level resolution, which, which is 10 to 20 centimeters level. Uh, and also because it uh, includes uh, dynamic objects, uh, it requires frequent updating. And the most common use case for high, defi high, high definition map is autonomous driving. Basically, uh, the components of the HD map can be divided into four layers. High dyna highly dynamic layer, transient dynamic layer, transient static layer, and permanent static layer. So uh, for the high highly dynamic layer, uh, it contains like uh, surrounding vehicles and the pedestrians uh, whose locations will be, uh, will be uh, changed frequently. But for the perm permanent static layer, uh, it mainly contains like road signs, which will not be changed until the road is redesigned. So uh, 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 from this perspective, we can see different layer in HD map has different requirements for uh, updating frequency. So what's the challenges for uh, HD map generation and updating? First, firstly, uh, as more vehicles and uh, their sensors come online, the challenge is how to handle the huge amount, uh, what huge amount of data and uh, to extract the salient information from it. And the second one is, uh, uh, since the different layers have different requirements for updating frequency, so how to build an e uh, efficient mechanism to up update to update each map needs to be considered. Uh, so basically, the generation of each map is heavily re relied on the uh, uh, data uh, captured by the onboard sensors. So we can see there are many kinds of uh, sensors embedded on the vehicles. And uh, they have different locations and they have different functionalities. So the main uh, sensors for autonomous vehicles are like cameras, radars, and, and the LiDAR. So we can see the right side figure um, for, the, uh, for these sensors. They have their own pros and cons. For example, uh, in, a, um, in a, a low, uh, low visibility scenario like foggy or snowy um, uh, weather, the light-based uh, LiDAR or camera uh, will, um, the, the performance will be degraded because, because of the low visibility. However, for the radar-based, uh, radio waves-based radar, uh, it can still perform good. So we can see actually uh, for these sensors will be complementary to each other. Uh, so, here, uh, so here the challenge is that uh, because the, the sensors are, company, are complementary uh, for, uh, to each other and the, uh, the amount of, of the sensors will, uh, of utilized sensors will uh, decide uh, the quality of the generated data. So here the challenge is that how to quantify the contribution of the uh, sensors for the number of utilized uh, sensors. So here is the uh, proposed framework for uh, the low, laten low latency HDMI updating mechanism. So in order to quantify the contribution of the sensors, the uh, first of all, we utilize the novel variety to uh, for the quantification. So uh, the novel variety is basically the concept from economics, and this approach assumes that each co consumer has a demand for multiple varieties of a product over a given time. So this is the uh, general uh, utility function to to show the uh, diversity of the of the vehicle. And uh, uh, here in the row, alpha and beta are the constant the coefficients. So by adjust the, uh, these pro parameters, the behavior or the uh, utility curve will be uh, different accordingly. So here is uh, in order to uh, understand the uh, level variety better, here is the figure shows the precise. 
So suppose we have three different users uh, in a given time from, uh, from zero to, to T. And we can see in the case, case one, the user three um, um, uh, consumes a different kind of data at each, uh, at each uh, time of third of T. And uh, it, so, so in the total, uh, so during the total time, it consumes three different kinds of um, um, data here. So, and so it achieves the high, highest utility. And uh, in the case three, the user one only consumes uh, one kind of data all the time. So it uh, achieves the lowest utility. So likewise, uh, the likewise the utility uh, the utilization of the uh, sensor here. If you use more uh, sensors to uh, generate the HD map, the data quality or the utility of the vehicles will be higher uh, because the sensors are actually complementary to each other. So the next one is the uh, uh, big data for federated analytics. So, uh, uh, so because the uh, vehicles are in different locations and they have different views, so in order to uh, uh, build up a complete, uh, a complete HD map, we need to gather the information from all these different vehicles. So this process is, be, uh, is modeled as a federated analytics. So for the distributed uh, optimization, uh, um, if the um, global optimization problem is strongly convex, the general upper bound of on the number of global uh, aggregation can be given like this. Here, the um, parameters are defined as, uh, as this. Also, for federated mechanism, if the data quality of, of the vehicles is better, then the higher accuracy can be achieved here. So, uh, so the actual, uh, so with the average utility here, uh, the actual needed number of the global aggregation is defined as L. So here, here is the, uh, uh, so here is the model of the uh, uh, number of iterations for the federated analytics. And the, the second one is the, and the third one is the HDMI components. So here the uh, R is, uh, so here R is the range of the updating scale for each layer in HDMI. Uh, um, for, um, so here we have this is because, for example, for the permanent static layer, the required info may be like uh, on street A, the speed limit is uh, 15 miles per hour. However, which, which, is, um, which, which is not changed frequently. However, for the highly dynamic layer, uh, the vehicle needs to know the surrounding, um, surrounding pedestrians and vehicles positions uh, within several meters or less, which, 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 is, more, uh, which is more precise uh, than the permanent static layer requirement. Therefore, the precision skill from the uh, permanent uh, static layer, transient static layer, uh, transient dynamic layer to the highly dynamic layer can be like uh, uh, countywide, region wide, uh, a few blocks wide to a crossing wide. So and uh, and uh, and uh, also we have uh, after defining defining the data size of the different layers in HD map. Here we introduce the communication model. So the first first one is the transmission rate, which is uh, based based on the uh, basic channel equations. And then the transmission time is defined as, as this. So, the lab, uh, so in the transmission time, the light side term is, is the uh, percentage transmitted by the edge, which is, uh, uh, which is related to the uh, transmission rates. And on the, uh, on the right side term is the uh, percentage transmitted by the cloud. Uh, and, the, the transmit, uh, and this transmission delay uh, will uh, uh, we we assume it as we assume it as a constant. Uh, since uh, uh, since the delay requirement for each map updating is very strict, when the delay becomes larger in a, a certain time period, the, pa the penalty increase increases not nearly uh, not nearly, nearly at the same time. So here we uh, take uh, uh, so here we um, take the Penalty function of the edge of 
information uh, like this one. So uh, if the so also here the alpha uh, for the different layers will be different. For the highly dynamic layer, things uh, it needs um, a more frequent updating. So here the alpha will be much larger than the permanent static layer, which means uh, the same uh, same latency will bring more penalty uh, for the high uh, for for the high uh, than highly dynamic layer compared with the permanent st static layer. And so finally, the problem uh, problem formulation is like this. So in order to minimize the uh, time stillness for the HDD map updating, the problem can be formulated as this: in order to minimize the overall penalty of information uh, penalty of the edge of information. And the, the first constraint means that uh, the amount of transmitted through the edge server cannot exceed the available amount, uh, available capacity for the edge server. And the third, uh, and the second constraint is that the uh, uh, percentage should be non negative. So, first of all, we uh, discussed the deterministic case for the HTML updating. So the original problem is like this. So by reformulating, we, we can reformulate the, the original problem like, like this. Then by obtaining the Higgety conditions uh, like this, and then we can derive these solutions uh, directly. So here is the solution for the uh, Minix case. However, uh, practically, an edge server provides services to multiple attached devices simultaneously. Such, as, such that the available capacity for um, autonomous vehicle is variational. So here to uh, modify the original problem, the first constraint is um, it's uh, it denoted as the uh, delta Q, which uh, is the uncertainty of the available capacity. So in this case, the original uh, the original problem can be uh, transformed to the to the uh, to the new form, which is in a distributional robust chance constraint optimization form. So uh, the foot, uh, so here the uh, in the object function, the C is the parameters, and the, the X is the decision variables, which is the percentage of each layer allocated to the edge server. And the first constraint is the uh, deterministic constraints on X, like it should be non-negative. And uh, the second constraint is the chance constraint specified by the ambiguity size. So, um, um, so uh, this uh, this um, this constraint can also be uh, uh, interpreted that it, that um, it requires all the uh, uncertain constraints satisfied for the probability distribution for the uh, ambiguity side p. Um, with, uh, with a probability, which is at least should be uh, one minus epsilon. So, uh, so here it can, uh, one minus epsilon is also the uh, uh, risk of tolerance, which, which means the, uh, the instance appearance chance. Also uh, to, uh, to figure out this, uh, uh, based on this uh, um, distributional robust chance constraint form, we can derive the physical region like this. Then, by obtaining the strong duality, we can we can find the equivalent uh, form of the original physical uh, physical region. Then, and um, it can be uh, uh, represented by the mixed uh, in integer uh, representation. However, for this for this problem, uh, the scale is too large, so. High, uh, but the uh, HD map updating uh, is very uh, is latency sensitive, so we need to find a, a quicker way to figure out the solution. So we so by uh, reformulating the the feasible uh, region in uh, in a conditional value at risk way, it, we can derive the uh, approximation solution of uh, which is the ZR and. Uh, Actually, the ZR is the subset of the original uh, physical region of C. Uh, so, by the way, uh, since the uh, all, all of the uh, process uh, can be approved mathematically, but because of the limitation of time, 
uh, I just ignore the precise of that. So here is the simulation results uh, for the deterministic case. And we can see uh, from the uh, we can see from the, uh, the left side figure shows the uh, percentage allocation of each layer in H scheme app, and the uh, right side figure shows the overall penalty uh, of H information for each layer and the uh, total uh, of the HD map. So we can see that all the curves indicating the, a decreasing trend with the increase of the edge server capacity because. Uh, when the edge resources are more sufficient, more HDMAP data will be transmitted through the edge server so that the transmission delay can be reduced. And we can see that in any case, the highly dynamic layer is always allocating the majority of the edge resources. And, uh, and, here, and the second one is the simulation result for the uncertain case. So firstly, we can see there is a gap uh, between the optimal solution uh, and we and the proposed the CVAR based model solution or uh, approximation. This is because the um, because the um, uh, and and uh, this is because the uncertainty for the available edge computing capacity. So, um, but uh, but the uh, percent uh, but uh, 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 but uh, since the existing uh, ex uh, existence of the uncertainty here. And we can see there is a gap, and the uh, optimal uh, optimality gap is is like one percent to the three percent, and uh, which is not very big, uh, and is also acceptable here. But uh, another thing we need to uh, no note is that the consumption time is uh, significantly reduced compared to obtaining the op uh, optimal solution. Um, so um, because the, the reason behind this is that uh, it might be the uh, the proposed uh, CVAR based model is uh, uh, second order on it programming and uh, doesn't involve any binary uh, variables. Therefore, for the uh, uh, for the time uh, sensitive applications like uh, HD map updating, um, the CVAR based model approximation can be an effective way. To uh, for the trade-off between the uh, time consumption and the accuracy, so um, this is the uh, second work. And uh, uh, now uh, let's look at the third work: mechanism design for ME CLCC federated learning. So uh, why we need federated learning? So uh, traditionally, if you want to perform machine learning among distributed devices, machine learning model will be performed on device, and then they will feed back the accuracy to the server. And at, the, and at the same time, if the accuracy is not enough, the data needs to be uh, collected to the server as well. Uh, after uh, collecting data, uh, uh, the server will train the machine learning model again and bro broadcast the models to all the devices and, and to see uh, if the performance is satisfied. So for uh, this one, it's actually a kind of uh, cent centralized matter. And the dis uh, disadvantages uh, here is like uh, like delayed update because uh, we need to collect data to the centralized cloud, and the long and the corresponding long transmission distance will result in delay as well. Uh, as well. And uh, the process of collecting data will also bring a high definition, uh, 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 a high communication costs, and because the data needs to be uh, transmitted uh, between so uh, device and the services. There is also a possible for the um, uh, privacy leakage. Uh, also, actually, there are many available edge nodes in MC networks, and actually, each edge server can perform can perform as an um, as an aggregator. So, uh, so how to uh, parallelly perform multiple uh, or multi-task federated learning is to be considered. So the challenges here, uh, so challenges are, uh, are here. So once the, uh, in traditional federated learning, um, once, uh, it assumes that once the end servers are invited to uh, the tasks, they will unconditionally take part in the federated learning, which ignores their willingness. Because uh, first of all, federated learning will uh, bring them comp computation cost. Also, oh, they need to check if the remaining energy can support 
them to uh, complete the federated learning tasks. Uh, second, uh, there are many available uh, edge nodes in MEC networks, and each one actually can perform as an aggregator. So we need to consider how to parallelly perform the multiple federated tasks. And the third one is the uh, information uh, exchange cannot be done entirely in the large scale Internet of Things scenarios. And the first one is that um, uh, in the MEC network, the end devices are always on the go, which means the time of uh, devices locating within the coverage of the ad server is limited. So we need to find out a low latency mechanism design. So here is the system model. So this is the computation model here. And uh, epsilon is the accuracy index, and D is the number of the data sample, M is the requirement recycles, uh, and F is the, the CPU frequency. So uh, from the computation model, here comes the preference of the IT server. So, uh, so uh, in order to uh, achieve in order to achieve the low latency goal, obviously for IT server it um, prefers the uh, devices with higher uh, CPU frequency, which accordingly will reduce the computation time. So based on this, we can build the preference of the IT servers. And the next one is the communication model. So SI is the model size, and the B is the bandwidth, P is the transmission power, H is the channel gate between uh, user I and IT server J, and the, and the capital N is the noise power. So based on the communication, uh, communication model, so uh, we can build up the device privacy uh, because um, because the uh, from the perspective of the end devices, if the channel gain is better, uh, then um, if if um, from the uh, perspective of energy or something like that, it can reduce the communication latency. So here is the problem formulation. The total amount of the time consumed can be written as the uh, communication time plus the computation um, computation time. Uh, however, uh, so 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 the latency minimization problem can be written as this. So here, the uh, in the object function, the theta i means the willingness of the devices, uh, which means if the uh, uh, mobile device uh, the remain energy of the mobile device is less than the threshold, uh, it will not participate in the bandwidth learning tasks, which means the theta i will be zero. Otherwise, it will, uh, it will participate in the uh, bandwidth learning tasks. So to solve, uh, so under the first constraint is the assignment index, which means uh, the mobile device's uh, i is assigned to the edge server j or, uh, or not. And the second constraint is that um, a client cannot uh, can connect to the maximum one edge server. And the third constraint is that at least there should be one client con con connected to the edge server so as to finish the tasks. And the first one is that the total number of uh, connections cannot exceed capacity of the edge servers. Uh, overall, the, the complexity of this uh, problem is the a m power of n. And so in order to reduce the complexity, we're utilizing the match, matching game to find the optimal solution. So, uh, so uh, as mentioned previously, uh, since the in large scale Internet of Things, the, ex and the information cha uh, change cannot be uh, uh, completed. Uh, for example, uh, uh, like the CPU frequency of the uh, some uh, of some device or uh, mobile devices may be not known to the uh, uh, IT servers, and also the uh, channel gains between the IT server and mobile and mobile devices can be not acknowledged uh, fully. So here uh, we uh, so here uh, in, uh, in introduce the incomplete preference list. So firstly, let's look at the complete preference list case. So uh, so suppose. Uh, um, uh, for the two parties, the preference are uh, list are uh, uh, acknowledged to each other fully, and we can see uh, after the matching, uh, each player can find a stable matching. However, for incomplete preference list, uh, we can see that only part of the candidates can 
have a stable matching. And this is because the lack of uh, information. So uh, in this case, some players may not be assigned a, a matching pair. So uh, the uh, so the others might be, um, uh, so the un unassigned participants may need to be assigned manually. Uh, however, but, but the, the incomplete uh, preference list is more uh, practical. So here is the uh, method we proposed for this problem. So the first step is to build, build the, the preference list based on utility functions for as servers and participants. And the second step is the matching based uh, uh, is to perform matching based on the preference list. And the third part is the capacity checking, which means uh, if the number of selected participants exceeds as edge node capacity, uh, edge node will only check uh, we we'll only keep those desirable participants within, within capacity and reject the applications of the others. And the fourth one is the partial matching checking. If there are still any participants who are willing to join, uh, who are willing to join the tasks, but is still but are still unsigned, they will be assigned to available as nodes randomly. So here is other results. We can see that our proposed method is close to the performance of complete preference list uh, and achieves a relatively low latency. And the gap here is because the information and lack. So here are the conclusions. So firstly, we introduced the, to the uh, machine learning and edge computing basics. And, uh, and, this, and this work also, pro, uh, also provides us to theoretical research between machine learning, multi access edge computing, and autonomous vehicles. And uh, this work mainly focuses on how to use machine learning or optimization method to allocate edge computing resources. Also, we discuss the uh, uh, machine learning design to optimize the um, uh, mechanism design to optimize the machine learning framework. And the simulation results show that our uh, proposed methods can achieve better accuracy for edge computing resources prediction on the objects like low, lat low latency for edge assist applications. So uh, here are the uh, two potential future work here. The first one is the adaptive resolution with communication resource constraints uh, for HTML updating. So for example, if the, uh, if the, um, if the uh, communication resources are limited, then the transmission rate or will be low. In this case, in order to guarantee the, uh, laten uh, the latency. So uh, in this case, a coarse version of the HTML can be uploaded. Uh, otherwise, if the communication resources uh, are sufficient, in that case, we can um, um, uh, transmit the detailed resolution HTML. And in that case, the latency of the transmit uh, of updating HTML can also be guaranteed. And the second one is the um, efficiency or quality of services guaranteed HTML distribution scheme. Uh, like the work two, we only discuss the uplink of the HTML. However, if the if the uh, complete HTML is formed, then we need we need to uh, distribute this to all of the autonomous vehicles such that they can perform the autonomous driving applications. And in this case, we can also include like V2V communications, uh, a vehicle to infrastructure communications, or a vehicle to uh, everything communications. So uh, how to uh, distribute the HTML uh, in a, a, a quality of services guaranteed way needs to be considered. So these two are the possible future works. And, uh, this, uh, and these are the uh, publications during my uh, PhD. And uh, uh, thank you. Any questions?